Are you currently struggling with formatting in-text citations and your references in your paper or in your thesis using the APA format? Well, don't worry because in this video I'm going to show you exactly how this is done and I'll show you how to format the in-text citation so that they're done correctly and I'll also show you how to automate the process so you can do it faster, um, save yourself a ton of time, save yourself a lot of effort and save yourself a lot of mistakes as well. So without much further ado, let's dive in and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to dive in into some of the rules of APA in-text citations. So we're going to be talking about the citations in here. Um, I'm not really going to go into the rules of uh, the reference list at the end. But if you'd like me to do that, uh, then comment below and I'll record another video in which I'll explain the rules for formatting the, um, the bibliography or the reference list, right? But in this video, we're just going to focus on the in-text um, references or citations, right? So um, the first thing that, um, that I want to point out is, you know, the basic rule that you're only using the surname or the family name or the last name, right? These are all synonyms. You never use the first name of the author, but only use the family name or in other words, the surname or the last name. And then after it, you must always put a comma and then the year of publication. If there is no date, then typically you put N dot D dot, right? And if you're finding these rules really difficult to wrap your head around and to remember, then stick around until the end of the video because I'm also going to show you how to completely automate this process so you don't have to think about all these rules all the time, right? But let's, let's proceed with some other rules. So this is what happens when you have one author. However, if a paper has more than one author, like here, Chung and Brain, notice that the two last names of the two different authors are separated by the, uh, by the symbol of end. Not the word end, but the symbol, right? So do that. If you have three or more authors, what we're going to do is we're going to write et al, right? And notice that there is a stop after al, right? So it's et, space, I'll stop, and then a comma, and then the year. And we do that if you have three or more authors, right? Et al. Now, another important thing to note is what, what do you do if you wanna back up your point with, by referring to several publications, right? So let's say like you've read three articles, and you want to use all three to support one point that you're making, which is really good because, you know, it kind of adds more validity, more strength to your point. Well, what you're going to do is separate each of these separate publications with a semicolon. So notice that we've got Schengen Brain, 2007, that's one article, and then we've got a semicolon, and then Kelch and Santana Williamson, semicolon, Levis et al., right? So we put semicolons. Now, you might be wondering, in what order do I put these different publications in the same brackets? In APA 7th edition, you do this alphabetically. So notice they're not organized chronologically from the oldest to the newest, but they're organized alphabetically, right? So C is, of course, before K in the alphabet, and that is before L as well. Uh, that's why we've got Schengen Brain, and then Kelch and Santana Williamson, and only last we've got uh, Levis et al. Right? So this is what you do if you want to back up one point using more than one um, reference in the same brackets. Now, this is how you do this, you know, when the reference is sort of at the end of the sentence, right? So you're making a specific point, like in here, you, you know, you're saying various studies also show that X, Y, and Z, and then at the end, you know, you're putting a reference to those various studies. However, sometimes, you know, you might want to use the name of the author as part of the sentence. Like in here, you want to say, Kichkoviak and Lowe found that, right? You might want to say, you know, Domingo shows that, where the author is part of the sentence. So what do you do then? Well, um, you need to use the authors in here, right? Um, and then 
in brackets you only put the year notice that in brackets you don't put the author um, again just the year right and this is very very important there is no comma after the authors either and I've seen a lot of people put comma in here there is no comma here there is only a comma if the author is in brackets right another difference is that you use the word end and not the symbol like you did here right so that's that's another big difference if it was at all it would be the same it would be just at all right now you might be wondering well, what do we do if we if we want to quote someone directly right here's a good example right you can see that there is a quote right in addition the vast majority of these non-native speakers and then the quote starts here speak and write the same blah 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 right so we've got the names of the author in here in the same way as I explained so there are two authors so they're separated by the symbol end and then comma the year of publication and then after the year of publication we put a comma and then small p stop and then the page number this last number is the page number right and you're only adding page numbers for direct quotes if it's your own words a paraphrase you're not doing it now if you want to use the author as part of the sentence right as the subject of the sentence right then what we're gonna do is like I explained before in brackets we're only going to put the year not the last name of the author anymore right so it's the name of the author and then you open brackets the year and then a comma P stop and then the page number because we have a quote in here right so these are some basic rules for in-text citations in APA 7th edition of course you know um, I could go go on for hours about like tiny differences between all sorts of different rules but this kind of covers let's say 90% of what you need to know right um, and the rest is like really exceptions details that I don't think are that important as long as you can remember these rules that I've just described to you you'll be good 90% of the time now as I promised you can also automate the process so let me show you how this can be done so in order to automate it I really recommend a program called Zotero that's Z-O-T-E-R-O and I'm not gonna go into the details of how exactly to download it and use it because I've got other videos on this channel where I explain exactly how to do this. But in here, I just want to show you like how you can very quickly just automate the whole referencing process and forget about you know all the rules that we've been discussing. You really don't need to remember those rules, you know, because also you, you're very likely to make a lot of mistakes when you're formatting the, the references and you're going to have to spend a lot of time, you know, thinking and remembering the rules. And then also, whenever you change something in the text, like you delete one reference, you have to remember to delete it from the reference list. When you add a reference manually, you have to add it to the reference list and so on. And like the longer your document becomes, the, the, the bigger the chaos, really. So you want to you wanna be using a program to automate this. And a good program is Zotro, right? So you know once you've downloaded it you'll have a word extension and we're gonna choose APA 7th edition because that's what we're gonna be looking at right and now we can add an in-text citation so um, let's add a couple um, citations in here right and notice how nicely it formats it straight away like that remember I said that sometimes you might want to use the name of the author um, as part of the sentence right so you can also do that um, right let's say we want to say something like this and here I want to add the year right uh, so I can also do that very easily I just look up the author right and um, hold on, maybe something different because this one doesn't seem to have the year of publication right I'll do this and then I edit and I omit author right and boom and then let's imagine this is gonna be a quote right so what we need is a page number in here so I can also edit that citation and then add page number in here right and of course 
you know, I can also add uh, a reference list just with one click. So this is super useful. Notice how much time it saves you, right? You don't have to think much. And of course, you could also change the referencing style just with one um, click. Um, if you go to document preferences, right, you can change from APA. So imagine like, you know, you've been formatting it in APA, but then you find out that like your research paper or your thesis needs to be um, formatted in a different style, like Elsevier Harvard, right? You just click OK and the program is just going to reformat everything for you and you don't really have to do anything. Now, if you'd like to work with me to help you to write research papers regularly, if you're determined to publish three or more papers in the next 12 months, then let's definitely talk, schedule this completely free one-to-one -one consultation. And, you know, we're going to talk one-to-one -one, and I want to find out a little bit more about your current challenges and about your goals to see how I might be able to best help you. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit, we'll outline a personalized strategy for you and walk you through how working together could actually help you. So the link to book that free strategy session is right below this video.